welcome back to AnimeCons TV. Uh, we're talking about Kineticon again. Now, Patrick, you had some pretty harsh words last yeah. year. Yeah, no, I wasn't able to attend the convention this year, but uh, I want to ask Doug about it to see if they've improved, because the last couple of years... Uh, we, we've all kind of felt it yeah, was like, going downhill. Uh, it's just more of the same. It's like problems they should have fixed. And so, how was it this year? I was honestly... Right off the bat, I was blown away. They have, I think they've finally seen some of the issues that they've had and said, okay, let's work on this, let's fix this, let's make right. this better. And the event shows that. They, you see a lot more staffers really stepping up, taking uh, a lead on things. You don't feel like it's just one person trying to run everything. Good. That was the first thing. Um, one of the first things that I saw that really stood out to me this year that I absolutely loved, and I'm asking you guys this now, if there's any Kineticon staffers watches, don't change this. The setup they had for the dealer's room, artist alley, and VIP autographs was perfect. Well, if you want yeah, I remember last year it was an odd setup, the traffic flow pattern, and then just to get to the food in the back, it was difficult. Mm. You had to take the food all the way through the dealer's room to get out. How did uh, they fix that? They now have both exhibit halls on that floor open. One is the game room, so that's a completely different room. And the dealer's room, artist alley, VIPs are another exhibit hall. You have a straight shot to the dealer's room if you want to go to that space. But if you want to see the artist, you can zigzag through and look at them which I feel like so many cons just take Artist Alley and shove it in a corner somewhere. This, you can actually see them. And also right there is the VIP autographs. So once again, if you want to stop and see that stuff, you can. If you want to keep going, it's perfect. The traffic keeps moving. Now the concessions are in the back. They're built in, so they yeah. have to be there. Was there a clear traffic? Yep. So they you, were, you didn't have to go through the dealer's room to get there? It was like you, you did, but it was a straight enough shot and they had the concessions in both exhibit halls, so after the dealer's room closed, you could still hit it in the game room. Well, they hit it in both before, Yeah. but the line in the dealer's room was shorter, so I went to that one and had to exit to the other side of the dealer's room, having to pass by everybody. Uh, that, did they fix that? They did fix that, so if you want, you could go kind of behind to the, all the seating and everything like that. It wasn't, okay. they, there yeah, was no bottleneck the there. The seating was outside in the other room before, so you had to go back around and then wait. So yeah, that's nah, okay. yeah, you could take the, the, the cutaway there. Right. Um, and I think having the game room in its own space, because gaming is one of the focuses of Kineticon, making it its own unique space really helped out. You saw some great games like Tycho Drum Master. Mm. That's al always a big hit. Um, plenty of other just tabletop gamings and things like that. One of the other things that I really noticed this year, and I think is something that I, I want to see Kineticon continue to do, and I, it's another thing other conventions can do, is get, you really felt like Hartford was welcoming them. They had the Kinetic Crawl, where all these different venues were hosting some acts and things like that. Um, I noticed City Steam, which is a place we like to go yeah. to, used to close at midnight, they now close at 1 a.m. Oh. And there's several staff they saw, we were wearing our convention badges, you know, really came up, talked to us, and were really excited to see us. Well, in, in previous years, I remember Hartford, as soon as five o'clock Friday hits, yeah. everybody leaves town and it's like a ghost town. That's changed now? It's, it's, it's getting there. better, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's also a movie theater across the street, which is where they had oh. one of their larger screening rooms. It's a not it's like a huge mainstream theater, but it's decent amount of seating in each one. That was just built in the last year? Yeah, the whole, oh. they just finished that. And not only did they have that one screening room for Kineticon programming there, but once again, if you had your convention badge, a movie ticket was $6. So like oh. Thursday night after all of us picked up our badges, we all went to go see Pacific Rim. And it was, it was great. And once again, this is... The community, you feel like the community wants the event there, and that is so huge. I mean, uh, we talk about Dragon Con, having yeah. the parade and everything like that. This is a smaller convention when you compare it to Dragon Con, doing that yeah, same thing. But it's something everybody can do. Let businesses know you're coming. Let them know what your clientele are like. And say, hey, if you make these people feel welcome, you'll do very well this weekend. Yeah. Now, one of the issues that we've brought up the last two years is that the masquerade has 
it necessarily hasn't run long, but because events forced it to start late, mm -hmm. it continues to run late and impacts the uh, event after that, which has no set of time and has a shortened event. So it kind of, and, but I mean, the stuff in the masquerade that they could have uh, yep. back to have that start. But how did that go this year? The masquerade was not over time. It was, I believe, no. one hour and twelve minutes. It ran oh, very wow. smoothly. They cut it. They cut down some of the fi the stuff between performances, so they kept it moving. Yeah. Well, I mean, that stuff is fun, but really, yeah. people are there to see the performances. Yeah, and it it didn't weigh down, and that was a nice yeah. thing to hear that that was a big fix because I remember talking with a couple of people that were in line for the event after the masquerade la last year that were kind of upset and yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things that I'm glad to see that they took that time and said this is something we need to fix yeah. because it, it, it's not something that was very difficult so I think once again it's that moving in the right direction um, the, yeah. the, the only really negative thing I have really heard about at one point was the registration pickup on Thursday and Friday, people who had pre-registered were taking two hours, whereas on-site was taking ten minutes. Ooh. And I honestly, I'm not sure what happened. Well, they're still using yeah. the laminated badges. Ah, uh, no, it's more cardstock now. Card but okay. um, the thing I would say is that's just something I think you get people in a room that work on registration, give them ten minute, ten minutes, half an hour, talk it out, say what went wrong. And how do we fix that? It's yeah. not it's not going to be a hard problem to fix, and that's that's a good thing to see. Um, the other thing I will say is, I think Kineticon's still trying to find its niche. It wants to figure out what convention it wants to be. Yeah, it's. I mean, it started as sort of just anime and gaming, but it expanded into. Yeah. I mean, they had a lot of sci-fi guests this year. Yeah, Marina Sirtis and, like and half the cast of Battlestar Galactica. And they were but. and they were. I the the reception to them seems kind of mixed. But a lot of like the online media, like uh, Paul and Storm's concert, oh. got a lot of really great stuff. Uh, Brental Floss, they they were very well received. And in the past, I know one of the times it seemed like Kineticon was the convention for webcomic artists. Yeah. And my suggestion to Kineticon would be keep rolling with that. Make if they want to make that the online media convention and gaming convention. It's something that makes the con unique, and that's something yeah. we say every con should really do is say, what makes my, our con different? What would make people choose us over another convention? Yeah, so especially I think that, when there's so many others in the area, mm -hmm. and it's a busy time of year. There's others across the country that are yeah. similar. Um, so so there's, other, there's other ways to do it. Like I said, you know, say what makes you unique, um, and f focus on that. Um, panel programming... I uh, loved the online media guests once again. I heard it had great panels and things like that. So, Kineticon, you're moving in the right direction, and it's very great to see. As someone who was on the fence about even going this year after hearing reports, seeing how things have improved has made me feel so much better. Now, one of the issues that Elizabeth and I brought up last mm -hmm. year, we were in the, in the studio and we unfolded the large pocket program, which was oh. not pocket size. What did they have for this year? They had a, they had a program the, guide. The I did not atlas. see a giant atlas. <laughs> Unfortunately, the one thing I, I think Kineticon needs to do, they're large enough now that they need to have an online guide like such as Guidebook or yeah. a similar program. I mean, the the basic, basic setup for them is f you can get the free package, and if you get unlimited downloads, it's like $500, which for a convention that size, the basic package, I mean, yeah. you, you can add on and do it. They, they have price points for every convention. Yeah. Well, I, didn't, I know the 200 downloads, which is probably too little for them, is free. Yeah, it's, so. you can... We you did can that for Wedding Con 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, off. Uh, Congrats to Shiva and Sketch. Yes, but we actually recorded them <laughs> on their wedding day. Shh, don't tell them. <laughs> um, but I, I think it's something that they should do. I mean, I have fallen in love with guidebook and things like that for times when it's like, hmm, oh, I don't yeah. know, I need to figure out what's going on right now that I want to check out. I can pull out my phone and see it. Yeah. And that, that would be my biggest suggestion yeah, for them. And there's next other year. competing apps, but I, I think Guidebook is the one that really is on top of it. It's, with yeah, and, and, it's, and it's. They've, you've seen a lot of improvements from like suggestions from oh, yeah. 
people who have used it regularly and yeah. they keep on that. My, my favorite part is being able to track my schedule and it just tells me what, oh, what is next. That, that's fantastic. That. Uh, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> Fix the schedule. Yeah. Um, um, the, and the only other thing, once again, with we talk about the huge thing is they have that huge program guide which lists every yeah. game that they offer in the game room. Was it still steampunk themed inside? Uh, no, it was no, not. The, the they, they, okay. they, they, had, they had a much more summary theme and everything. It okay. looked really sharp. But, I mean, my, my personal opinion is I don't think you need big, long descriptions of everything. Maybe keep that in a book at the, in the gaming room itself so people can take uh, a look but not have to print out a million different copies. Yeah. And that'll, that'll cut down their printing costs, and you can use those savings for something like Guidebook. Yeah, because you can put the long descriptions in there, and it would mm -hmm. cost no more than if you had a short description. Or even just have them on the website ahead of time. And, yep. So. Uh, and uh, what was uh, another thing we brought up last year was, oh, the staff. You, you had mentioned that they, yeah, they, they were helping out. Because last year we had angry staffer. It was just shouting. Every like, staffer I talked with was super friendly. Okay. And a lot of... There was, I mean, I, I know some, several staffers, but even the ones I didn't know, they wanted to talk. And then I have to say, from the, this is from a press angle, when I walked in and said, oh, I'm going to go pick up my press badge, every person I knew, talked to knew where I needed to go. Oh, wow. And that, that to <laughs> me, is big because half the time yeah. they don't know, oh, well, I think you go over there. It's like, nope, you go right there. Yeah, usually it's perfect. Like, oh, I'm press. Oh, um, <laughs> go to con ops. <laughs> yeah, hard. so yeah. That, that one, not only were they friendly, they knew what was going on. And that is huge. Yeah. So. And uh, yeah, what else from, oh, the convention center staff. That was another issue that a lot of people brought up last yeah, year. Yeah, I, any, they did not stand, I, they did not stand out to me. Okay. Oh, neither good nor bad, so I hope that's all good. Yeah. Um, so once again, I'd yeah, say. It seems like a big improvement. Yeah, g good job, guys. Yeah. Seriously. Um, and if it's, if next year's gonna be like this year, I will definitely be back. But uh, man, they don't have anime and scripted. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I moved. Uh, you, had to, you had to get that job in California. Yeah. All right. Oh, well. well. All right. Um, if you want to send us a con report. Yeah. What did you think of Kinetic yeah, Con? We, send us a voicemail. 762-ADEQUATE. 762-233-7828. There's the forums. Yeah. Uh, don't forget our, our Facebook, our yeah. Twitter. There are all the oodles of ways Google to, to let us know. You know, we we love to hear not just our opinions. We yeah. want to hear what everyone else thinks because we're yeah. just email, one group. Email podcast at animecons.tv. Uh, we definitely love hearing con reports from other people besides us. So, uh, all right. Yeah, we'll, and uh, we'll see, see you in, in uh, next week. I think we have Jeremy Lee. Oh so, wow! Yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll see you then. Bye. And they sang something, 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 da 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 da